Are you a non-native English speaker looking to improve your confidence in business meetings? You want to learn how to contribute effectively in team discussions and share your ideas easily? You're in the right place. I'm making today's podcast for your English speaking practice. I find this method very helpful because it's an example a real American English conversation at work. If you want to learn English and improve your speaking, then practice using real conversations and begin to speak fluent English. I like making videos like this because many clients have told me that they say the same things over and over in business meetings or in any English conversations. And in these kind of videos, I can give you this long conversation and I hope that you can take a lot of these phrases and different ways to say things and I want you to practice saying them so that they become normal and natural in your speaking. I've also included something interesting in this video and I've included a woman named Nina. Now Nina is a little shy and she doesn't feel comfortable speaking in meetings. Nina doesn't feel comfortable in her native language, and she's really not confident in English. <laughs> and so when she's in the middle of these meetings, she doesn't participate. She wants to, but she's a little shy about it, and she doesn't. Now maybe you can relate to Nina. And in this meeting, I've got four participants. The meeting is being led by Sarah. Then we've talked about Nina. And then there's two other participants in this meeting. And you'll see the four different participants as we go through. In today's video, I'm going to dive into a team collaboration. And I'll cover how to start with effective small talk, set project goals, brainstorm ideas, develop a plan of action, and keep everyone engaged. And by the end of this video, you'll have practical tips and strategies to boost your confidence and improve your business communication skills. What I want you to do is use this video for your English speaking practice so that you can speak fluent English. I've created the five sections of this meeting. You can see the five sections in the timestamps below. It's a very long video. So the timestamps are in there to help you so that you can take your time going through each of these sections. And it's going to give you a real look at English conversation in an American business meeting. It's a really long video. <laughs> so let's get started. <laughs> and before we do, I'm Grant. Those of you that don't know me, I'm an executive business English communication confidence coach, and I've helped many non-native English speaking professionals like you become more confident and effective in using English in your business situations. I'm here on a mission. I'm on a mission to help millions of you improve your lives, change your lives by becoming confident in English so you can have the freedom to do whatever it is you want to do in life. That's why I'm here and I want to help change your life. Effective communication is crucial for successful team collaboration, whether you're sharing ideas, setting goals, or developing a plan. The ability to communicate clearly and confidently make a huge difference in your career. This video is designed to provide you with practical skills and insights that you can apply immediately. Let's get started with section one. Section one, small talk and setting the tone. Sarah. Hi everyone, thanks for joining the meeting today. Before we dive into the project, let's catch up a bit and see how everyone is doing. How was everyone's weekend? Did anyone do something fun? Emma, I went hiking with my family. It was refreshing to spend time outdoors. Sarah, that sounds amazing, Emma. Where did you go hiking? 
Emma. We went to the Blue Ridge Mountains. The weather was perfect. And the views? Breathtaking. Sarah. Wow, the Blue Ridge Mountains are beautiful. Did you see any interesting wildlife? Emma. Yes, we saw a few deer and lots of different birds. My kids were so excited. Jason. That sounds great, Emma. I spent the weekend working on my car. It's a hobby of mine. Sarah. Nice, Jason. What kind of car do you have? Jason. I have an old Ford Mustang. I've been restoring it for a few years now. Sarah. That's impressive. What did you work on this weekend? Jason. I was fixing the engine and installing new brakes. It's a lot of work, but it's rewarding. Sarah. Sounds like a productive weekend. How about you, Nina? Did you do anything interesting? Remember Nina, a shy participant? Nina, I read a new book. It was really interesting. Sarah, that's wonderful, Nina. What book did you read? Nina, it's called The Alchemist. It's about following your dreams. Sarah, I've heard great things about that book. What did you like most about it? Nina, I liked how it encourages you to pursue your personal dreams, no matter the obstacles. Emma, I read that book too, Nina. The message is so inspiring. Do you have a favorite part? Nina, you see how Nina is starting to open up? I really like the part where Santiago learns to listen to his heart and discovers his true path. Sarah, that's a beautiful part. It's amazing how books can inspire us. Speaking of inspirations, has anyone watched any good movies lately? Jason, I watched a documentary on space exploration. It was fascinating to see how far we've come. Sarah, that sounds interesting, Jason. What was the most surprising thing you learned? Jason, I was amazed by the technology they use to explore distant planets. It's incredible how they can gather so much information. Sarah, technology is truly amazing. Nina, do you have any favorite movies or shows you've been watching? You see how Sarah includes Nina more? Nina, I've been watching a series called The Crown. It's about the life of Queen Elizabeth II. Sarah, I've heard great things about the crown. What do you like about it? Nina, I enjoy the historical aspects and how it shows the personal side of the royal family. Emma, that sounds intriguing, Nina. I've been meaning to watch it. Is there a particular episode you recommend? Nina, I really like the episode about the moon landing. It was interesting to see how it affected the royal family. Sarah, it's always nice to hear what everyone's been up to. Let's get started on our main agenda for now. We're here to brainstorm ideas for our new project and discuss our plan of action. Now that was great small talk and how to begin a really good meeting in America. Most of you might think that's crazy. Why would you spend so much time talking about nothing? You have important business to do. But in the U.S., this will be really normal. And as I'll do in future videos, I'll talk a lot about small talk because I realize that small talk is not comfortable, natural, normal for many of you in, in your culture and in your business culture. It's like, let's get to work. We don't need this small talk thing. But as I'll show you, there's a purpose to small talk in the U.S. And it really is all about building trust and building relationships with people that you want to work with. And when we have these kind of conversations, it's extremely normal. So I realize it's not normal for you. But I'm going to include these things in our conversations within future podcasts just like this. Now that we've set a positive tone for the beginning of this meeting, let's move on to discussing Section 2. Section 2 is 
Project introduction and goals. Sarah. All right, now that we've caught up, let's shift our focus to the main agenda for today. We have an exciting new project on the horizon, and I want to make sure we're all aligned on the goals and objectives. Remember, our aim is to create something that truly serves our audience. Our new project is developing an app to help users manage their daily tasks more efficiently. The main goal is to create a user-friendly app that boosts productivity. What other goals do you think we should consider? Emma, I think it's important that the app is visually appealing. A good design will attract more users. Sarah, absolutely, Emma. A strong visual design can make a big difference. What elements do you think would be most effective for this? Emma, using a clean layout, intuitive icons, and vibrant colors can help make the app more attractive and easy to navigate. Sarah, great suggestions. Jason, what about compatibility? Any thoughts on that? Jason, we should ensure the app works smoothly across different devices and operating systems. It should be accessible to as many users as possible. Sarah, good point, Jason. Cross-platform compatibility is key. Nina, do you have any thoughts on additional features or goals for the app? Here's our shy Nina. Maybe we can add a feature that lets users set personal goals and track their progress. Sarah, that's a fantastic idea, Nina. Personal goal tracking could really help users stay motivated. Can you expand on how this feature might work? Nina, users could set daily, weekly, or monthly goals and get reminders to help them stay on track. They could also see their progress over time. Sarah, that's a brilliant idea, Nina. It adds a personal touch to the app. Emma, do you think we could integrate reminders into the app? Emma, yes, reminders are a great idea. We could use push notifications to keep users informed about their tasks and goals. Jason. And we should also think about security features to protect user data, especially since the app will track personal information. Sarah, definitely, Jason. Data security is crucial. Let's make sure we include robust security measures. What about user feedback? How should we handle that? Emma? We could have an in-app feedback system where users can easily submit their comments and suggestions. Sarah, that's a good idea. Gathering user feedback will help us continuously improve the app. Nina, do you think we should add any other interactive elements? Nina, maybe a community feature where users can share tips and support each other. Sarah, I love that idea, Nina. A community feature could really enhance user engagement and make the app more supportive. Jason? We could also consider integrating with other productivity tools like calendars and to-do lists to make the app more comprehensive. Emma? Yes, integration is key. Users will appreciate being able to sync their tasks across different platforms. Sarah? Great point, Emma. We want to make the app as convenient and useful as possible. Nina, do you have any additional thoughts on how we can make the app more user-friendly? Nina, maybe we could have an onboarding tutorial that guides new users through the app's features. Sarah, that's an excellent suggestion, Nina. An onboarding tutorial can help users get the most out of the app from the start. Jason, 
how do you think we can make sure the app stays relevant and up to date? Jason, regular updates based on user feedback and new trends and productivity apps or keep it fresh. We should also monitor the app's performance and make improvements as necessary. Sarah, absolutely. Staying responsive to user needs and industry trends is crucial. Emma, you have any final thoughts on how we can ensure the app's success? Emma, we should also focus on marketing the app effectively to reach our target audience. A good launch strategy will be important. Sarah, great point, Emma. A well-planned launch can make a big difference. Let's make sure we have a strong marketing plan in place. Sarah, great input, everyone. We've identified some fantastic goals and features for our app. Next, let's move on to brainstorming ideas on how we can achieve these goals and bring the project to life. Great. <laughs> We started this meeting with really good small talk. When we built a good connection with everyone, even Shy Nina. Then we discussed the goals of this project in an effective way. With our goals in mind, it's time to brainstorm some creative ideas for our project. Keep your focus on Nina and see how she starts to open up here. This is because she started speaking early in the meeting. That really helped her. It also helped that Sarah went to her a few times and asked her some questions. And you can just feel her confidence start to build. Get an early start speaking in these meetings. If you don't feel comfortable or confident joining meetings and speaking more. Section three, brainstorming ideas. Sarah, now that we have a clear understanding of our project goals, Let's start brainstorming some ideas. Remember, no idea is too big or too small. This is a safe space to share your thoughts and we're all here to support each other. Think about the message our app needs to convey to our users. Emma, do you have any ideas to start us off? Emma? We could include a calendar feature that syncs with the user's existing calendars to help them manage their tasks better. Sarah, that's a great idea, Emma. How do you think we could make the calendar feature stand out from other apps? Emma, maybe we can add color coding for different types of tasks and deadlines, making it visually appealing and easy to manage. Jason, we could also add a task reminder system that sends notifications at custom intervals to keep users on track. Sarah, good thinking, Jason. Reminders are definitely useful. Nina, what are your thoughts? Do you have any ideas you'd like to share? Isn't it nice how Sarah keeps including Nina? Nina. Perhaps we could have a section for daily tips and motivational quotes to help users stay productive and inspired. Sarah, that's a wonderful suggestion, Nina. Daily tips and motivational quotes could add a lot of value to the app. Jason, how could we implement this feature? Jason, we could have a rotating set of tips and quotes that change every day. Users could also save their favorite ones. Emma, and maybe users could submit their own tips and quotes to share with the community. Sarah, I love that idea, Emma. It would create a sense of community and user engagement. Nina, do you think we could include any other interactive elements? Nina, becoming more confident. Maybe a feature where users can set challenges for themselves and track their progress, like completing a certain number of tasks in a week. Sarah, that's an excellent idea, Nina. 
challenges can be very motivating. Jason, how do you think we could incorporate this feature into the app? Jason, we could have a challenge tracker that allows users to set goals, track their progress, and earn badges or rewards for completing challenges. Emma, and we could have social sharing options so users can share their achievements with friends and on social media. Sarah, social sharing is a great way to keep users engaged and spread the word about the app. Nina, do you have any other ideas or features you'd like to see? Nina, maybe a feature where users can create customizable dashboards so they can see the information that's most important to them at a glance. Sarah, that's a brilliant idea, Nina. Customizable dashboards can make the app more personal and user-friendly. Jason, how could we implement this? Jason, we could allow users to choose widgets for their dashboard, such as their calendar, task list, and progress tracker, and arrange them how they like. Emma, and we could offer different themes and layouts so users can personalize their dashboards even more. Sarah, fantastic ideas, everyone. This is exactly the kind of creative thinking we need. We have some amazing ideas here. Let's take these ideas and start discussing a plan of action to bring them to life. It's important that we know what actions we need to take next to make this project a success. <laughs> Section three provided a very detailed and engaging brainstorming session, encouraging participation from all team members, especially Nina. The conversation flowed naturally and incorporated active listening and follow-up questions to ensure everyone's ideas are valued and explored. Now, let's look to see what we can do with a plan of action. Section four, the proposed plan of action. Sarah, great job brainstorming everyone. Now that we have a lot of exciting ideas, let's move on to discussing our plan of action. We need to assign tasks, set timelines, and ensure everyone knows their responsibilities. Remember, clear actions will help us turn these ideas into a successful project. Let's start by dividing the tasks based on our strengths. Emma? Can you take charge of the design aspects of the app? Emma, sure. I can start working on the initial designs and layouts. Sarah, great. Jason, can you handle the coding and technical integration parts? Jason, yes, I'll work on the back end development and ensure everything runs smoothly. Sarah, perfect. Nina, would you be comfortable leading the content creation, including daily tips and user guides? Nina, not so shy anymore. Yes, I can do that. Sarah, that's wonderful, Nina. Your ideas for tips and motivational content will really add value to the app. Can you also oversee the community engagement features? Nina, yes, I'd be happy to. Sarah. Fantastic. Let's set a timeline. How about we aim to have the initial prototype ready in six weeks? Does that work for everyone? Emma, that sounds doable to me. Jason, yes. Six weeks should be enough time to get the basic features up and running. Nina, I agree. Six weeks is a good timeline. Sarah, excellent. We'll also need to test the app and gather feedback. Emma, could you also oversee the user testing phase? Emma, absolutely. I can organize user testing sessions and gather feedback. Sarah, great. Jason, can you assist with any technical issues during testing? 
Jason? Yes, I'll be on hand to fix any bugs and improve the app based on feedback. Sarah. Nina, would you be comfortable collecting user feedback and integrating it into our content plan? Nina. Yes, I can handle that. I'll make sure we get valuable insights from our users. Sarah. That's perfect. Let's also set up regular check-in meetings to review our progress and address any challenges. How does once a week sound? Emma, once a week works for me. Jason, same here. Nina, that works for me too. Sarah, great. Let's schedule our check-ins for Tuesday mornings. This way we can discuss our progress and make any necessary adjustments early in the week. Does that sound good to everyone? Emma, yes, that's a good plan. Jason, agreed. Nina, that sounds good. Sarah, wonderful. Lastly, let's discuss how we'll communicate outside of meetings. Emma, What's the best way for you to share updates? Emma, I prefer using our team chat for quick updates and emails for more detailed reports. Jason, same here. The team chat works well for me. Sarah, Nina, how about you? Nina, the team chat is good. I'll also send weekly emails with the content progress. Sarah, that sounds perfect. Remember, if you face challenges or have new ideas, don't hesitate to share them. We're all here to support each other. We have a solid plan of action and clear responsibilities. Next, let's talk about how we can keep everyone engaged and address any concerns or questions. Encouraging participation and open communication is key to our success. <laughs> It was really great to see how a good plan of action came together and everyone participated. Finally, let's talk about how we can keep everyone engaged and address many concerns in the future. Step five, encouraging participation and addressing concerns. Sarah, we've covered a lot of ground today but our work isn't done until everyone feels confident and included. Let's focus on how we can encourage participation from the whole team and address any concerns that might come up. It's important that everyone feels heard and valued in this process. Sarah, I know that sometimes it can be difficult to speak up, especially if you're unsure about your ideas. But remember, this is a collaborative effort and every contribution is valuable. Emma, do you have any thoughts on how we can make sure everyone feels comfortable sharing their ideas? Emma, I think it's important to create a supportive environment where no one feels judged. We should encourage each other and make it clear that all ideas are welcome. Sarah, absolutely, Emma. Building a supportive environment is key. Jason, what do you think we can do to make sure everyone has a chance to speak. Jason, we could make a point to go around the room and ask everyone for their input so no one gets overlooked. Sarah, great idea, Jason. That way everyone gets a chance to contribute. Nina, I know you've been a bit quieter today. How do you feel about this approach? Would you feel more comfortable if we made sure to check in with everyone? Nina. Yes, I think that would help. Sometimes I'm not sure if what I want to say is relevant, so I hold back. Sarah, I understand, Nina. But remember, your perspective is important. And sometimes the ideas that seem small or off topic can lead to great insights. We want to hear from you. How about we work together to create a few strategies you can use to jump into the conversation. Nina, that sounds good. I could try preparing a few points ahead of time or asking a question if I'm not sure about something. Sarah, 
Those are excellent strategies, Nina. Preparing in advance can give you more confidence to speak up. And asking questions is a great way to engage and show your interest. Emma, do you have any tips for Nina on how to feel more comfortable contributing? Emma, one thing that helps me is to start by agreeing with something someone else said and then adding my own thoughts. It's easier to jump in that way. That's a great tip, Emma. Starting with agreement can make it easier to join the conversation. Jason, any other thoughts on how we can support each other in meetings? Jason, I think it's also important to have follow-up questions ready. It shows that you're engaged and can help keep the conversation going. Sarah, good point, Jason. Follow-up questions not only show you're listening, but also help deepen the discussion. Nina, how does that sound to you? Nina, that sounds helpful. I'll definitely try to use these strategies. Sarah, I'm glad to hear that, Nina. And remember, it's okay to take your time to think before you speak. We're all here to support each other. Emma, and if you ever feel stuck, just remember that we're all in this together. We want to hear from you. Jason, exactly. The more perspectives we have, the better our project will be. Sarah, that's right. Having everyone's thoughts is one of our greatest strengths. Let's also make sure to address any concerns as they come up. Nina, you have any concerns about the project or anything else you'd like to discuss? Nina, not at the moment, but I'll speak up if something comes to mind. That's great, Nina. And the same goes for everyone. If you have concerns or something isn't clear, let's talk about it sooner rather than later. We're all here to help each other succeed. Sarah, we've had a productive discussion today, and I'm confident that by supporting each other, we can achieve our goals. Let's wrap up by summarizing what we've accomplished and outlining our next steps. This section emphasizes the importance of encouraging participation and addressing concerns, ensuring that everyone feels included and supported. It provides, I think, really practical strategies for people that are shy, like Nina, maybe like you. And it supports the value of open communication within a team. I hope you can take many of these tips and strategies in this section and use them for yourself. If this is something that you have difficulty participating in meetings, saying what you want to say. Now, let's wrap it up with a short conclusion to the meeting. Conclusion. Sarah. Great job, everyone. We've made excellent progress today. Let's quickly summarize what we've discussed and our next steps. We started with some great small talk to set a positive tone and get to know each other better. Then we discussed our project goals and identified key features we want to include in our app. These include a user-friendly interface, compatibility across devices, personal goal tracking, daily tips, and a community feature. Next, we brainstormed creative ideas on how to implement these features, such as a color-coded calendar, task reminders, motivational quotes, and customizable dashboards. We developed a clear plan of action with assigned tasks and a timeline. Emma will handle the design, Jason will manage the coding and technical integration, and Nina will lead the content creation and community engagement. We also set up a weekly check-in schedule to review our progress and address any challenges. Remember, open communication is key. Don't hesitate to share your thoughts and any challenges you face. Together, we can make this project a success. Stay focused on your tasks and keep our project goals in mind. 
We want to create an app that truly serves our users and makes their lives easier. As we move forward, I encourage each of you to actively participate in our discussions and share your ideas. Your contributions are invaluable to the success of this project. Let's keep the momentum going and stay committed to our timeline. If you have any questions or need help, reach out to me or anyone on the team. We're all here to support each other. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Let's make this app a great success. See you all at our next check-in meeting on Tuesday morning. Have a great day. This conclusion <laughs> wraps up the meeting by summarizing key points, providing a lot of encouragement for continued engagement, and offering a clear call to action. It maintains a really positive and supportive tone, ensuring that all team members feel valued and motivated. We've covered a lot today. We started with effective small talk, to set a positive tone, discussed our project goals, brainstormed creative ideas, developed a clear plan of action, and talked about how to keep everyone engaged. Remember, open communication and active participation are key to successful team collaboration. I hope that this session has given you the confidence and tools you need to participate actively in team meetings. Practice these techniques and you'll find yourself becoming more comfortable and effective in your business interactions. I want you to use this video to help you learn English and use it for your English speaking practice. Saying everything out loud is a perfect way to practice your American English conversation skills. I'd love to hear your thoughts and any questions you have in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share your comments, and I also invite you to learn your Business English Confidence Score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.